Okay, guys, we're going to make a start. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining today's webinar. Uh, as just a quick bit of housekeeping, the webinar will be recorded and uploaded to our YouTube channel the next couple of days. Just due to the volume of attendees as well, um, we're not going to be doing a live Q&A at the end of the session like we have in the past. Um, but you will be receiving an email to make sure that you've got an opportunity to speak to us and even schedule a meeting uh, with myself or the wider team at Full Swigger to explore API scanning with Butch Enterprise in more detail, uh, should you like what you see in the web app. So with that being said, let's make a start. And meet the team. So those of us today at Portswigger presenting is myself, Alex, and I work in the enterprise sales team at Portswigger. Uh, I'm Katie, I'm a product manager on Scanner here at Portswigger. Um, and I'm Josh. I'm here working in custom success for our enterprise customers. Thank you, guys. In terms of today's agenda, so obviously the focus is going to be on API scanning um, and some new features uh, that we've launched recently for Bertsuite Enterprise. We're going to discuss around the need for API scanning in the first place, what that actually looks like in Bertsuite Enterprise Edition. Josh is going to take us through a bit of a demo in terms of uh, what a scan might look like at the configuration options available. And for those interested, uh, after having said all that, we'll look at what the next steps will look like as well. So to begin with, why do we need purpose-built API scanning functionality? So I'm sure this audience has their own thoughts on kind of current challenges uh, around APIs. Um, and by the way, we would love to hear those, those challenges in order for us to help you as well. But generally speaking, as an industry trend, there is certainly a growing reliance on APIs at microservices in modern web apps and probably a lot of legacy estates still out there as well. And data from EBS Global suggests that organizations across varying different industries are reporting an average of 26 APIs per web application. And this number is really only growing over time. And we certainly speak to customers with hundreds or even thousands of endpoints that they have to manage across the board. Yeah. And in combination with that, less than 50% of application security professionals actually have dedicated API testing tools in place. So it's a bit of a combination of two problems there, having that visibility across the web application portfolio with that increasing number of APIs and actually having effective tools that are specifically designed to test them. And for those customers who haven't addressed those issues yet, we're only really increasing the risks. One thing to highlight in terms of port swigger and our tool sets is that API scanning in of itself is not necessarily a new feature. It is something that we've offered um, in the past with our with the Bird Scanner. So we started with REST API support to which we added GraphQL as well in the context of a web application scan. But the feedback we were getting from our customer base was that we wanted a specific focus on API scanning versus that end uh, web app scan, which is what we've been working quite hard behind the scenes to deliver on. For those on the call that are virtual professional users, it's perhaps important to call out that enterprise is based on the same scanning technology as professional, which of course you already know works. But we'll just spend a couple of minutes um, giving an example of an actual customer use case, a customer that I've spoken to recently that kind of focused on API scanning. And I've just tried to pick out some of the themes that would hopefully resonate with you. So we were talking to a, a fairly large organization that did have a dedicated AppSec team. Their kind of focus in terms of testing was split between uh, the QA environment, uh, but also their production or externally facing applications and they had a bit of a mixture of both internal and external definitions or collections of APIs. Um, as we just alluded to uh, in the previous slide, those numbers are, are growing. And with that context being set, the challenges that they were seeing was, of course, the overarching one that we want to protect uh, the data uh, and the web applications that we look at today. There was a bit of a, a theme of, of lacking visibility of all the endpoints, all the definitions that are out there across lots of different teams and verticals, et cetera. Um, and they, had, they were moving towards this notion that they wanted to test APIs before changes were hitting production, not just testing the externally facing web applications uh, as to the fact. And when we discussed the kind of impact um, that any of these challenges might have, 
of course, kind of worst case scenario would be something along the lines of a data breach, which would be quite detrimental to the business itself. Um, just not knowing how vulnerable they are and how to kind of prioritize their activities uh, was a bit of a headache. Um, and then resources around scaling their processes, but this was more specifically in that notion of bringing API testing uh, into the into the QA or, or staging process uh, where the resources were now really more revolving around the development teams. So when we spoke to the customer around uh, Bit Suite Enterprise, these were the kind of two focuses uh, or areas of focus in terms of how we would be successful. So primarily that was around that visibility component of vulnerable API definitions um, and having that, that kind of known entity, which, which Katie's going to take us through in a moment. Um, and then Bit Suite Enterprise uh, as a product does integrate with the pipeline. It's one of the main use cases that we discuss with our customers, so we can absolutely support that notion of integrating DAST and API testing uh, into QA, staging, pre-prod, before we talk about these things to production. So with all that being said, we're going to get into the meat of things and talk about how we've gone about introducing uh, enhanced API scanning in virtual enterprise edition. And for this, we to change it. Thank you. Um... So as Alex said before, um, we have had API scanning in Web Suite Enterprise Edition um, for a long time now. And so I'm going to cover what we've brought into the tool um, in our enhancements. As we understand that users want to be able to scan API definitions in isolation, so we're hoping that this will expand our capabilities even further. So I will cover uh, the following four in our new addi additional features. The first will be uploading API definition files directly into Web Suite Enterprise Edition identifying vulnerable APIs with our new OpenAPI scan check, um, how to test OpenAI API schemas with different endpoints, uh, and also looking into our authentication offerings as well. <laughs> so first up, uh, just a, a common thing that we hear from our customers um, is they often have access to their OpenAPI files, but can't scan them in isolation without running a full web app scan. Um, so this feature now allows you to directly upload API definitions straight into Burp Suite Enterprise Edition. And this can be done in two ways. Um, the first is by adding in a URL, which you can see there on the left. Um, this allows you to put the URL in and scan the latest version of your API definition. The second offering is by directly uploading the file into, into the tool. Uh, this is a more static file and will need to be updated each time a definition file changes. We currently support schemas for OpenAPI on version 2 and version 3.0 as well. Mm. API testing, as Alex said, is becoming more important as vulnerability than APIs have become more common. So we now include active and passive scan checks for detecting OpenAPI definitions during scans. Uh, the scan check uses a list of common OpenAPI definition file names and locations to search for publicly available definitions. This will then flag them in your enterprise and pose them as, uh, show them as potential security threats. Next up is we understand that a lot of API definition files have a lot of endpoints and being able to filter through them and see what's actually going to be covered is really important. Um, what we are able to offer now is that you'll be able to see all of the endpoints that you can find and parse that file and also filter really quickly through them. This should allow you to uh, quickly set any destructive actions out of scope so you can get the best coverage and therefore get more comprehensive scouts, um, giving you a high number of vulnerabilities identified. And finally, uh, API scanning more often than not requires authentication. So you can do this seamlessly now as you, as you set up your scan. Um, we currently support basic authentication, bearer tokens and API keys, and there'll be more to come soon. Um, for static files, you will be able to, this will be auto detected while you um, upload. And you can then add, edit, add new, change, whatever you need to do to update your authentication. Uh, for a URL scan, you will be setting this up as part of your configuration and it will be passed through for your scan. Thanks, Katie. Um, okay, guys, now we're going to go into the demo portion and take a look at some of those specific features that we've just run through. Just to add some kind of additional context before Josh makes a start. Um, so now when we onboard an application to Bitsuit Enterprise, you have a choice. Now you can either scan 
uh, essentially a front end web application. Uh, so typically we're passing a URL for the scanner to target. Now in the context of APIs, any direct di data paths between that front end and API endpoints would still be covered within the context of that scan. So that would be kind of option number one for you. If you want to test uh, APIs specifically, as we'll see from Josh, we now have that option available where you can pick an API scan and then how you want to provide that definition. And um, so Josh, over to you, take it away. Thanks, Alex. So I'm just going to swipe over here seamlessly and what we can see straight away is Burbs console. Now, if we go to our site's view as normal, I'm going to go and create a new site. And what you can see here, as Alex was saying, is I can now choose between a web app and an API. Now, with a web app, I can still scan as I used to, but I can still use my start URLs. And if we discover a slightly definition file during that scan, we'll still scan it as normal as Katie was describing. But if I now go to my API site and then give it a name, I'll just call it Swigginar. I can now choose whether or not to upload a file up by the first URL. Now, as it was mentioned before, if I upload that file, we'll use that same version every time that I've been scan. But if I use the host URL, every scan will go to that URL and always put on the latest version. So if we go to host URL here, put in, for example, mysites.com slash api.json. And then under authentication, I can add my credentials. So either basic, bearer, or API key. I can choose a label, put my username in, and then put my password in too. But if I have a URL, um, if I have an, a file I want to upload, I can then upload that directly into the product. And you can see here, under authentication, I've got this red dot, which means that my authentication method has been passed. And from here, you can see that the bearer token has been picked up from the configuration file. I can then just go in here and add the token in directly. And as you noticed from before, my authentication method I added has still persisted. And if I go to add API credentials, I can also add extra credentials in as I could before. If I now go down to endpoints, what you can see is that the endpoints from that file have been passed and I can filter by HTTP method. I can search for endpoints. I can also change how many endpoints are, changed, are, are shown on this screen. And then I can also filter out particular endpoints that I don't want to scan during this, um, uh, during this scan. Under scan settings, I can then set everything that I could set normally for a normal web app scan. And I'm just going to save this site now. And you can see that this performs exactly the same way as a normal site in enterprise. You run the scan, and straight away, you can see that the, scan, that the API is being scanned. Now, as I can with a normal web app, I can also scan this site using a CI-driven scan. So if I swipe over here, what you can see here is some basic uh, scan configuration that I've got configured. The site, for start URLs, this is how you normally do a, a web app scan. If I comment this section out, you can see under API definition, I can provide the URL um, to the API definition file, or I can also point to the API definition file that I've got hosted locally. And then the rest of this configuration file is I do normally expect. So that's effectively how you can run a new scan in enterprise through both the console and the CI driven scan capabilities of the new API functionality that we've got in enterprise. Go with you. Thanks, Josh. Um, so guys, now we're going to talk about uh, the fact that this isn't kind of the end of our journey when it comes to APIs. Um, we do have some more features planned. I can take to your uh, a quick tour of those for us now. Yeah, so as uh, as Alex said, this is this is in the end. We really want to continuously improve our API offerings. So uh, we mentioned earlier that we already support REST APIs and MathQL for our scanning, um, and very soon in the next uh, in the next month or so, SOAP APIs will also be supported. Uh, we are constantly evaluating and wanting to bring even more schemes in, so this should continue to grow. Um, we also want to increase our authentication support. So as I said before, basic or uh, bearer token and API are currently, but we know there are plenty more that people are interested in. So this is something that we are continually uh, looking at and incorporating into the tool. Um, the last, but uh, and finally, not by not means least, um, we're aware that a lot of people want to be able to upload their API definition whilst they're doing a web app scan. So bring the two in together. So this is something that we are looking to build into the tool over the next few months, and hopefully you'll be able to do both very soon uh, within Enterprise Edition. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. So that's going to be it from us, folks, uh, in terms of our API date. 
For next steps, everybody who registered, you are going to receive an email and you'll be invited to request uh, a trial of Bet Street Enterprise Edition. So if you'd like to explore the product in more detail, maybe take a look specifically at the API uh, features and functions that we've mentioned here, and we would certainly encourage you to do so. Um, that process will enable you to speak to one of our experts who can go and support you through a, a deeper evaluation. And of course, we'll be happy to answer any questions that have been generated from this session. Uh, as I already said, the recording of this session will also be made available. In terms of our actual process over here at Paul Twigger, once you get that email, you can submit um, just a few details to us. That would that will then result in a, in a call uh, with either myself or one of my colleagues in the enterprise team. Um, we'll discuss your requirements, uh, what you might be doing today versus what you want to achieve in the future. Uh, that would typically then lead on to a product demo, uh, maybe delivered by Josh himself. So again, we'll go a bit more deeper into the product. We can cover other areas, other integrations that we support. Again, if you're only interested in the uh, in the API features, we can deep dive on that. Um, and if that's ticking all the boxes for you, we would then support full trial or evaluation. Um, so that's all said and done. Guys, before you go, there will be another short poll appearing on the screen if you'd be so kind as to complete that. Um, but we really appreciate you joining. Many thanks from the team here at Port Swigger. Um, but yeah, that's all from us, folks. Thanks, guys. You take care.